Well, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> oh, I think far, I'm gonna be upset. Okay, um, <laughs> questions on 24? I should have. I should have. Oh, yeah. I got tripped up. 29. And what does that say? Was that a word problem? It's one of those word problems. Same one as the quiz, just different Oh, uh, how, how, did, how was it? It was a, a radius of. Um, so it's a tin a tin yeah, can. Tin box to, to the top of the box. It's a box. No, can, can, sorry, can. Yeah. Um, the radius, the radius is four. four. They told me the radius wow. is four. And the height is twelve. And the thickness is point zero four zero. I thought it was zero zero four. Point zero zero point zero four. The thickness all around? Yeah. Point zero four. It says use differential to find the Um is it a closed can? Yeah. Okay. And we want to find the volume of the metal. Or how much metal is in the can. Or how much metal. Right. So when they say how much metal, they're talking about volume, right? Because you don't measure metal in terms of area or anything like that. Volume of the metal. So the idea was here we have a tin can. It's cylindrical, right? Yes. Right? But then there's a thickness, right? So. So basically they're saying the thickness though is 0 0.4, 0 0.04. So this is 0 0.04, this is 0 0.04. We know the radius is here, but again the thickness is 0 0.04. So um, I guess we can do something like a side view. So how are we going to set this up? You got to use the linear thing, right? Okay. Yeah, we're going to use differentials, but how? What equation are we using? How are we going to set this up? <coughs> so we use volume is pi i squared h, but we actually know what dr is and we know what dh is, right? Yes. What is, what are those? Dr is point zero four and. DH is point zero eight. Point zero four. DH is point zero eight. Do we understand why those are? Wait, no. No. Okay. So if you look at the top view. Oh yeah. No, okay. We have this. The radius is just here. That's R. And then there's an extra DR here for the thickness. Right. It's the change in R. Um, so, because radius is only measured in one direction, you only have that thickness. However, the height, though, is different. The height is here, which is h, but there's a thickness of 0.4 here that's a part of dh, and there's a thickness of 0.4 at the bottom that's a part of dh as well. All right, so there are two dhs. They sum, so this dh is given by 0.04 is the change in height, as well as 0.04 at the bottom. That's why I had to make sure it's a is it closed, is it open? So that knowing that there's a top and a bottom, each adds 0 0.04 to it, therefore the change in height is 0 0.08. Yes? If it says only bottom, then you just... If there's only bottom, then you neglect the top and the DH will be 0 0.04 as well. So, yeah, and at this point we just find the change in volume is going to be the volume of the can. So, how do we do this again? Uh, 2 pi r, r h times dr plus pi r squared times h. So the radius was 4, the height is 12, and dr is 0 0.04, which is 4 over 100 plus Pi the radius is four, and dH is eight. So, whatever. And it would be in centimeter cube. Although, 
in this class, I don't really care about the units, so whatever. In physics, you care about the units mostly, but I don't really care. But that's basically how you do it. And the quiz was, again, very similar, except I told you the diameter, I believe, yeah. in the quiz. So it's going to be the same idea. So you can just replace r with d over 2, and then use that equation. And in terms of diameter, it will double as well, because diameter goes from end to end. Mm -hmm. um, other questions? It's another word problem. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, a model for the surface area of the human body is given by S is equal to point one zero nine one W to the point four two five H to the point seventeen five. Okay. W is the weight in pounds, H is the height in inches, S is measured in square feet. If the errors in measurement of W and H are at most 2%, use differentials to estimate the maximum percentage error in calculating the surface here, the body. Okay, so um, basically we just want to find DS and find the error. Okay, so we want to find the error. I assume what they really want is relative error. How off could you be with these measurements? So what's this? this is ds over s. Okay. So what does ds look like here? Point one zero nine one times point four two five w. Huh? Negative one point four two five. Negative one point four two five. Yeah. No, no, what? Well, no. Point, point 0.425 minus 1. Yes, which is, which is point 0.5 something. Negative point 0.575. Yeah. Um, that's correct. Negative 0.575. Yeah. H to the point seven two five times dW plus 0 0.75. 0 0.9 W to the point four two five H. Uh, multiply by 0.725, double to the 0.425, h to the minus 1 is like minus 0.2 something. Minus 0.275. Dh. Yeah. 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 Over the actual um, 1091, w.425h. Mm. Okay, so now we are going to. Did anyone, what's this? Cancel. Cancel. 0.1091. 0.1091. Yeah, that actually cancels. Yeah. Um, and um, the h of um, w, like if you bring it down, it's going to be w to the 1. And for the h2. How are we going to bring the w down? Like, if w you set up two separate, separate two different fractions. What is, what is dw? 0 0.02. No. Point zero 0.02. Point zero 0.02. It's 2%. Why is it not 0.02? Zero point zero two? The question says, the errors in this are at most 2%. Two over 
Yeah, but 2% of what? Of both. Don't know what you do. Would you assume that that would be H equal to 1? No, why would we assume WH? Who you know has weight 1? I weigh 1. <laughs> I have a height of 1 and I weigh 1. I'm a Q. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so it says the error is 2%. 2% of what? Whatever the total was. So this is 0 0.02 W. Similarly, this is 0 0.02 H. This is 7, 2. Okay. Now we're going to realize. You see this W and this W, the power here is 1. When I multiply this, I'm just going to undo the derivative. I'm going to get the original power back. Right? Same thing is going to happen over here with the H's. So essentially, this part, the, the variables, right, are going to give me back what's in the denominator. So pretty much all these W's and H's cancel the guys in the bottom. Right? And so what we end up with is 0 0.02, uh, is it going to be 0.55? Point fifty five. Point fifty five. We're adding these. Right? So this and this? Yeah. What's that? One point fifty. One point one five? Yeah. Do you actually know what that is? 2.3%. It's 0 0.023. 0 0.023? Yeah. Okay. So there's a 2.3% error. So, um, so what I did was I got the W. Yeah, you'd have to make sure you split the fraction, yeah, though, right? You can split it in two, bring the W down, and... Same thing happens. So it's not wrong. Would everything cancel? You end up with 2.3? Yeah. Because yeah. it's you end up multiplying them together again, and it's the same thing. You get W to the 1, and it cancels. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, last one. What did that say? Twenty five. Um, Z equals 5 x squared plus y squared. X, y changes from 0.15 to 0.1. From 1, 2, 2, 1.05 to 0.1. Compare delta Z and CZ. Let's find them. How do we find DZ? Oh, just Derivative with respect to X, which is 10X times DX, plus the derivative with respect to Y, which is 2Y times DY which in this case it's going to be 10 times our original x value was 1. The change in x is 
0.05 plus our original y value is 2. The change in y is 0.1. That's going to give you a number. 0.9. How do you find delta set? Final minus initial, right? But it's with the actual function, right? You have to add it backwards. Point one five two one minus f of one two. So here you're just gonna have five times one point zero five squared plus two point one squared minus five times one squared plus two squared. And that should be the number. And then you just compare those. Um, they should be relatively close. We didn't move that far. So basically, this is the actual change in the function, but the change between the function and the tangent line is this. So it's actually just an approximation of that. that. This you can think of as the actual value. Actual change. This is just the approximation of the change. Approximation of change from tangent line. Tangent line. In this case, it wasn't that far off. Now we're going to talk about everyone's, well, you can pass up the homework if you didn't last time. Now we're going to talk about everyone's favorite derivative rule from top one and two. The chain rule. The chain rule in multi, multivariable chain rule. <laughs> At the end of this chapter, there's something pretty cool about implicit differentiation. I don't think we will get to that anymore today, since we all had to wait on Samson to get here. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but when you see it, it's going to be pretty cool, and you're going to realize, you know. Anyway, it's going to be cool when I show you. But for now, we're going to look at the chain rule. Um, Let's look at single variable again. How do you think of the chain rule? What does the chain rule say? How are Chain rule. What do you use the chain rule to differentiate? What kind of functions? Composite, composite functions. Right, which means it's the rule that tells you how to differentiate when a function is plugged into another function, right? So we're talking about differentiating something that looks like f of g of x. What is that? F times the of the inside, right? Differentiate the outside, multiply it by the derivative of the inside. That was a chain rule. There was another way to look at it that we don't we didn't use often. It was pretty much the same thing, except they changed the variable. The chain rule said dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. Right? This was just call fy and g u. Right? You just change the variable and you sort of write it. Right? So if my g is the u du dx is that g prime, and then dy du is the derivative of in terms of g. Right? This is the guy that's more convenient for us now, and that's the one we're going to use to figure out the chain rule. The multivariable. We use 
the second formulation. Basically, how the chain rule works in multi-variable functions. Um, we pretty much do this for each variable. Add all the all the terms together. Your book breaks it into two into two main cases. The first one is the easier one, of course. You don't necessarily think of cases when you're doing this, but they like to organize it this way. Let's do a case one, a basic case. Right? This means let's say you're given z is a function of x and y, and x is a function of t, and y is also a function of t. I think I asked this on the quiz. Then if I wanted to find something like the derivative of z with respect to t, how do we do that? No, x about case 2 on the derivative. Do we have or Right, you sort of do that thing over there. You put dz over dx times dx over dt plus dz dy times dy dt. Right? You can see in each case sort of what you don't want cancels and you're left over with what you do want. Similar to how the chain rule works, you can like cancel the du's to get the dy dx. Right? So this is basically the chain rule. In the very simple case where each variable in your function is only a function of one other variable. Right? There are cases when they can be multivariable functions themselves and that's case two. Right? So in case one, we have a multivariable function, but each variable is, can be parameterized in terms of a single other variable. And we can find the derivative with respect to t of this function by doing this manipulation. Um, let's actually convince ourselves that this formula works. Let's do something really easy that we can know what the answer is. <coughs> Suppose z is equal to x squared y x is equal to t squared, y is equal to t. I can make it nicer, t cubed. Okay. Okay. Pretend you're in top one, right? So you don't know about the multivariate chain. How would you do this? Well, you see there are two variables here. You can't do anything with two variables. But I know what each variable is in terms of a single variable, so I just plug those guys in. Right? Note, z is actually equal to t squared squared times t cubed, which gives us what? That's t to the fourth times t cubed. That's t to the seventh, right? So if I find dz dt, what should I get? 7t to the 6. 7t to the 6. Okay. So in, in the single variable way, it sort of works out. What if I actually try to use this way to, to get to the derivative? Would I actually get the same thing? Well, I better. Because again, there are times when plugging things in directly is inconvenient because of the function it's just uglier and harder to deal with. But this is a very simple case where we could just plug the things in and figure out the answer. Let's do it using our new formula. So here, what I know is dz dt is equal to dz dx, dx dt. By the way, this, the d's on the z should be partial derivatives. because it's a multivariable function. Plus dz dy 
dy times dy dt. Okay, what's partial of z with respect to x of this function? 2xy times, what's the derivative of x with respect to t? 2t. Plus, what's the partial of z with respect to y of that function? x squared. What's the derivative of y with respect to t? 2t squared, right? So by our rule, that's the derivative. Now let's say I wanted to make sure that it's actually the same as this. I can now just substitute the x and y, right? I can just plug in, my x is actually t squared, my y is actually t cubed, plus my x is actually t squared. So over here I get what? I get 4 t to the 6 plus 3t to the 6, actually equals 7t to the 6. Got that work, huh? Right. So it's not a proof. The proof of this is a little bit too complicated. I'm not going to do it. But at least now we can sort of, we sort of see, OK, it, it, it works when we expect it to work. Let's just take it on faith for now that it does work. And let's um, continue to do some more example. Where did I put that paper? Drop on the floor. my z is now sine of xy, my x is 3t squared, 3t cubed plus 7, my y is given 4t minus 2, and I want to find dz dt evaluated at t equals 0. So let's go to this one. <coughs> What's the Z D T? Um tell me the formula first. Oh, oh um, partial Normally when I just learn something, I, I make it a habit of, you know, when I'm doing the problems, to always write out the formula until by the time I hit a test, I know the formula at the back of my hand, right? It's, it's one of the, it's something that helps you memorize things. It's one of the techniques, right? So I was just, just learned it, so I'm always going to write down the formula first. Okay, so dz dx, partial with respect to x of this function, y cosine xy from 
the chain rule in the old way we think about it, times dx dt. 9t squared. 9t squared plus dz dy. X cosine x y. X cosine x y times dy dt equals just 4. I'm going to evaluate that at t equals 0. How do I evaluate that at t equals 0? Solve, solve for x and y. Well, we need to know x and y, first of all, right? So x equals to 7, and y equals to minus 2 when t equals 0. So basically, I'm just saying, everywhere I see x, replace with 7. Everywhere I see y, replace with minus 2. Everywhere I see t, I replace with 0. t is going to replace 0 here, so that whole thing is 0. x is going to be, so this is just 0 plus x is 7 cosine of minus 14 times 4. So 28 cosine 14 is the answer. Okay? I know I didn't forget the negative sign. Cosine is an even function. Okay, so... Um, dz dt. Write down the formula again. Partial of this with respect to x. So yeah, this one is through my chalk, I think. Brackets. <laughs> right? Has two terms. This has to be distributed. Make sure you put the brackets. Oh no, the brackets are there. No, you're gonna forget in a test. Okay. <laughs> Alright, plus partial of this with respect to y. 2x over x plus 2y. 2x over x plus 2y times minus sine t. Nothing much to do here. In general, I don't require, at least I don't particularly care about plugging in all these values unless you're specifically asked to compute something. So it's okay to leave your answers in terms of x's and t's unless you're specifically asked to do otherwise. Right? So that's a perfectly valid answer as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how I name the variables, same form applies, dw dx times dx dt. I'll read it t equals zero. Partial with respect to x of this. 2xy. Partial with respect to x. Plus part with respect to y of this. Brackets, very important. Times dy dt. 
and I want to evaluate at t equals 0. Right? So here, when t equals 0, what is my x? Sine of 0? Did I put t equals 0? Yes, I did. You know that's easy. So sine of 0? E to the 0? Okay, so now I'm going to put those guys in. So x is 0. So this whole term here is 0 because of the x. x is 0. My y is 1. So it's just minus 2 times e to the 0. Minus 2 is that answer. Any questions? Too easy, right? Let's make it harder. Oh, no. Let's just count three. It should be harder than this. Okay. x and y are themselves multivariable functions. This leads us to case 2. So given set equals This, this generalizes. I'm going to, did I write down the general rule? I will after this. Um, Z equals f of x, y. Now suppose x is a function of s and t, and y is a function of s and t. Right? So these guys, x and y, are multivariable functions. Right? And z is a function in terms of those multivariable functions. Right? So the question is, our independent variables ultimately are s and t, right? Those are going to be the, the guys that are manipulated by themselves. Then, assuming it exists, I can find the partial of z with respect to s, and I can find the partial of z with respect to t. The partial derivatives. What do you think partial of z with respect to s would look like? Yeah. z dx, yes. partial of x with respect to s, dz dy, partial of y with respect to s. So, very similar to the, the first guy, except everyone's a partial derivative now, and we are focusing on what variable we want to do. So this would be these partial z, partial x, partial x with respect to t this time, plus partial z, partial y, partial y with respect to t. Okay? Those would be our formulas of it. I didn't write this down, but <coughs> what if I had something like this? W is a function of x, y, and z. X is a function of s and t. Y is a function of S and T. Z is a function of S and T. Um, what is partial of W with respect to T? Well, we uh, Z I don't want. Right. No, that's, that's good. Yeah, what's the dw dt? dw over dx. dx over dt. I mean, dw over dy. Right, so you get the idea. This can extend, it can expand itself to encompass any number of variables you want to put into it. Um, 
So it seems like you guys get the formula. I don't even know if I should tell you about this at all. But there's a mnemonic for people who don't like to remember formulas like that to remember. Um, the mnemonic is called the tree diagram. It's in your text, I'll tell you about it. To me, the formula seems straightforward to come up with, but um, what you can do is you can start a tree by breaking down each variable into what the variables it's defined in terms of. So W, I can think of it as a function of x, y, and z. Right? And then I can think of x breaking into two functions, two variables, s and t. Y breaks into S and T. Z breaks into S and T. And then, for example, if you want to find <coughs> dW dt, what you pretty much do is try to figure out every path that you can get to from W to T, right? So you can go along this path, that's one arm. You can go along this path, that's the other arm. You can go along this path, that's the third arm. Now you move across the arms by taking derivatives and then you multiply them together. So in the first case, dw dx times dx dt. And, and then you add each arm together. So you can dw dy times dy dt plus dw dz. times dz dt. Some people like that, so you can, if you're a pictorial person, you can think of it that way. Yeah. In terms of like order of dimensions, how many like dimensions would uh, w be in? W is in the fourth dimension. What it looks like? Depends how you how you interpret the word visualize. There are people who can visualize things in 4D. Okay, let's see here. Let's do some examples of this. z equals 2xy, x equals s squared plus t squared, y equals s over t. Find dz ds and dz dt. Yes. Okay, partial of this with respect to x is 2y partial of x with respect to s, 2s plus partial of z with respect to y, 2x partial of y with respect to s. Y 
partial z with respect to x, we already did that, that's 2y times partial of x with respect to t, 2t plus partial of z with respect to y is 2x times partial of y with respect to t is what? S, no, negative s over t squared. Negative s over t squared. And yeah, problem using the chain rule to find a derivative and maybe plugging in some points, it's, it's coming on the final. They always put a problem like this. But as you can see, it's, it's sort of straightforward. It's not one of the ones, one of the problems you worry about really. So just make sure you do your practice to get very quick and very um, good with it, and you should be fine. <coughs> so. Let's go bigger. W equals xy plus yz plus xz. Find ws and wdt if this equals 1 when So a problem like this could be like a sub-problem, you know, part B, plus in three part B, they might ask you something like this. So it's a chain rule problem, and they'll also ask you to evaluate it at a certain point. And so, DWDS. I didn't. X is... At that point, you raise your hand and say to the doctor, I don't think there's, I think there's a problem with this question. And the doctor goes, don't worry, I'll, I'll be around in the final, so you can ask me. This is S cosine T, Y is S sine T, Z is just T. So first what we could do is we can find what are these values. <clears throat> when s equals 1, t equals 2 pi, then x would be what? s equals 1, so that's just 1. Cosine of 2 pi is? Also 1. Uh, y is 1, sine of 2 pi? You guys took too long. When t equals 2 pi, well, z equals 2 pi. So now let's go dw, ds at this point, write out the formula. So it's dw, dx, dx, ds, plus dw, dy, dy, ds, plus dw, dz. Z-D-S. We're going to evaluate it when ST equals 1, 2, pi. But first let's find our function. What's the partial with respect to X of W? Huh? Y plus, y plus Z. Put in our brackets. Partial of S, X with respect to S is <coughs> cosine t partial of w with respect to y yeah. x plus z in brackets sine. this is sine t partial w with respect to z 
That's y plus x in brackets, <coughs> then partial of z with respect to s. It's zero. Okay, so this whole term we don't care about. And now we can just plug these guys in. So y is zero, z is two pi. So this is just two pi times cosine of two pi, which is one. And sine of two pi is of course zero, so that's gonna be zero. So this is just two pi. So the partial with respect to s at that point is just two pi. So we already know dw dx, this was y plus z. Partial of x with respect to t is what? Negative s sine t. Negative s sine t. Plus partial of w with respect to y is x plus z in brackets. Partial of y with respect to t. S cosine t. Z with respect to t is 1. Now we'll plug these numbers in. Sine of 2 pi, I know is 0. That's all going to be 0. And so we're here. Our x is 1. Our z is 2 pi. 1 plus 2 pi. S is 1 and cosine of 2 pi is 1. So that's just 1. x is 1, y is 0, so that's just 1. So it's just 2 plus 2 pi. Okay, we will stop there. Next time I'll talk about why things like this are important and we'll do implicit differentiation the right way for once. Probably no, we didn't finish this, so we'll finish next time.